Buck and I are very close friends. He's passed away, you know. Yes. But uh, getting into an area that we are very versed in, you're like uh, encyclopedia I have right so, here, right so, in my fingertips. So Buck, uh, <laughs> that Buck himself is another story. I mean, I could spend time telling stories about Buck. But anyway, when he built the Crystal Palace, uh, he he wanted some of my baseball memorabilia. I said, Buck, I don't what I I got no memorabilia. So I want the no hitter stuff. So I take him a ball, sign, and he takes a picture and he put it there, and he's got uh, well, he puts it in his in his museum there at the Crystal Palace, right where, right at the end of the thing. Well, anyway, uh, so as he's building this, uh, if, you, if you, you've been here, right? Oh, you've been yeah. here? So, you know the, the car, the car behind the bar? I've, I've never been there. Okay, well, then he's got this Cadillac behind the bar. Well, anyway, he's got this Cadillac, supposedly Elvis Presley gave it to him. And, and so he's sitting there one day, and this the story is that they look behind the bar, and, and uh, so somebody said, Buck, uh, Buck said, what are we going to do with my cat? I want to put my Cadillac in there. I said, Buck, there's no place to put it. He said, what about behind the bar right there? I said, well, Buck, the bar's already built. So, tear the wall down and put my car in there. So they tear the gun and wall down. It cost him nine million to build this place. I heard. So they tear the wall down put this put this Cadillac behind the nine bar. Nine million dollars? Yeah. To build, to build the build, Crystal yeah. Palace? Yeah. And so, uh, there's the Cadillac in there, yeah. sitting behind the bar. That's one of the that's one of the most popular places where people take pictures of that Cadillac. Mm -hmm. Buck, Buck passed away at his house uh, after eating his favorite meal from the restaurant, which is a chicken fried steak. He ate the same thing every day and then go on and play his music. So anyway, he goes home, passes away. Mm -hmm. So they have the funeral. They set his body in, in uh, what do they call it, in, in uh, state, what do they call it, lay in, lay in state, whatever. For viewing? But, yeah, in the Crystal Palace, all dark except the spotlights are on him. They got these flowered red, white, and guitar guitars uh, as set all over the place. He's laying there in an open coffin, no cameras, nobody's allowed in that. I mean, they, I mean, they got security. So you walk by, it was spooky, really. It was like, God, here's Buck laying in his, the place. Actually, I think the place actually killed him, building it and then performing. I think it actually killed him. He's only 76 when he died. That's young, Yeah. you know? So, I mean, I'm almost that old, you know? So you're almost that old, too, pretty soon. No, I'm not. Don't even go there. <laughs> So I'll anyway, deny it in a court of law. You'll get there, buddy. <laughs> so anyway, then they have the funeral. Uh, all of country stars are there, you know, uh, Garth Brooks and and uh, uh, what's the uh, Fritz of Bakersfield guy? Uh, Dwight Yoakam. Dwight Yoakam's there. We go back to the Crystal Palace, right? Now, now Buck has a son that's a singer uh, named Buddy Owens. They, he's go by his actually is Buddy Allen, but he went by Buddy Owens. So we're all sitting there, special invited guests again. And, and Buddy and Dwight Yoakam got up and sang the streets of Bakersfield. And everybody is crying. I mean, it's a, woo, it's just like chill over your body. You know, I still think about it. So anyway, that's really a special moment from that place, uh, the Crystal Palace. Let, let me ask you this, because I think it rings true for Fresno and, and this area as well. But like the artists from Bakersfield and guys like Buck and Merle, they kind of rode with us, you know, they were telling a certain story about the area, but yet the area is also helping tell their stories. What is it about Bakersfield and that setting that, that helped match so well with these guys' music? Yeah, well, I think it's the, the Dust Bowl era, you know, the people migrated out here, all the, uh, you know, my family followed the picking, whatever it was. it was, if it was lettuce, if it was the grapes, if it was cotton, I picked cotton when I was a kid. We had cotton field right across the street from where I lived in Delano, and I'd go and we'd pick cotton and three cents a pound, two cents a pound. You have this big old bag, you lug this bag, yeah. you know, and pull it. And so uh, I think <laughs> it's Merle and Buck tell a story about about the Dust Bowl era. I mean, about the if you listen to Buck's Buck songs and uh, and and uh, Merle's songs, it's all about the trials and tribulations of the people. Who, came through here and worked in the fields and you know the Bakersfield sound was a lot of there was a lot of good it was popular uh, all the nightclubs there were several nightclubs that those guys would just jump around and go sing and they walk up on stage and start singing you know and uh, that's uh, really it's a story of the Central Valley if you think about it I mean it's the trials and tribulations of the you know, people 99 coming out from the Dust Bowl. Door.